Hello, my name's Paul. Hi, my name's Rachel. And we are the English Language Lab. And this is our business English podcast, BizPod. We're going to try to teach you everything you need to know about business English. So, whether you need English for job hunting, presentations, meetings, or any other form of communication, you have come to the right place. Sit back, relax, and enjoy BizPod. So, Rachel, LinkedIn, is it worth it? No idea, Paul. You tell me. <laughs> well, what do you use LinkedIn for? You have a LinkedIn profile, but why? Why do you have one and what do you use it for? I created one quite a while ago when I was looking for other teaching platforms, looking for freelance work. But then I sort of forgot about it a bit. Um, and it was only recently that I sort of polished it up and paid a bit more attention to it when someone sought me out for some work through it. Right. Um, okay. So how did that make you feel then that someone contacted you through LinkedIn to ask you about work? Um, I was quite pleased about it because to be honest it wasn't totally up to date and I felt it you know it's meant to be some sort of online CV sort of online resume and it wasn't absolutely you know shiny polished perfect so I, I felt I was lucky <laughs> and I rectified that quickly um, but since then I've actually started using it a lot with learners and it's a way for me to endorse their English skills you know when they're job hunting yeah that's one thing I wanted to ask you about because I've noticed on your profile you have lots of endorsements you've actually given me an endorsement as well I noticed on my profile well of course <laughs> so how confident do you feel using say a platform like LinkedIn to endorse somebody's English language skills I would only endorse their English language skills or any other skills if I felt confident that I would personally recommend them. Otherwise, I'm not going to endorse anybody because it reflects back on your reputation. So a student has got to have take le taken lessons with me so I know their level, yeah, things like that. Um, but I know a lot of people use it as some kind of sort of um, business social media f platform. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, originally, that's what I thought LinkedIn was. I thought it was social media for business. Uh, maybe it was originally, but it's obviously it's morphed into something completely different. Although, I think a lot of business people do use LinkedIn to make contacts. A lot of, um, a lot of my students use LinkedIn um, in their business. You know, if they're looking for a new, if you're trying to make contact with a new customer, they go to LinkedIn to find the people to speak to, first of all. Ah, so it's like a professional directory. Yeah, or professional networking, I think, was how it was originally designed. So it's a bit of networking, a bit of marketing, a bit of sales, a bit of recruitment, a bit of training. Yeah, because there's lots of training um, on LinkedIn as well. So I think, it's, I think basically LinkedIn is social media for professionals. You don't get any of the um, sharing of um, kittens doing stupid thing on things on there, I don't think. Well, I hope you don't. Mate, it's social media for business, so it's social media plus. But no, it's not social, is it? It's business media. It's for business purposes, for s professional. Yeah. I don't like the term social media anyway. So, yeah. Business media. Yeah. It's, it's professional. It's for proper people, not people on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> well, let me ask you then, if you were advising learners, English language learners, to have their profile in English on LinkedIn, or at least some element to show that they are fluent or have some level of fluency in English, what should they include? What is important on LinkedIn from what you can see? Well, you mentioned earlier that you have polished your profile to make it more relevant. Um, so I, I think what you've got to do is treat it like a CV, 
like your you know curriculum vitae and you've got to make sure that your latest experiences and skills and training is all on there and to encourage people like you and me to endorse skills that you have um, demonstrated like language English language I think that's what LinkedIn's all about I could be completely wrong I don't know I'm not a social media expert well let me ask you then what about your LinkedIn profile yeah I had a look a few minutes ago before we started recording just to remind myself about my LinkedIn profile um, yeah basically it just sort of says who I am and what I do um, there's nothing fancy on there I don't think there's a few links but yeah, it's just it just shows who I am and what I do. I think it's my CV. It's my CV on a computer. That's how I view it. Well, what are you going to use it for? Because obviously, you have the beautiful British English, which is all that free English stuff. Uh huh. I have it as the professional freelancer, serious, you know, linguist, um, language expert sort of route with my masters and everything. Totally different to you, more academic. Yeah, okay. What do I use it for? Yeah, well, you can find links on there on my profile to Beautiful British English on YouTube. Um, there's lots of other links on there. Um, I really just use it to give away free things. So you're using it as a form of social media. And I was using it no, as a form no, of no, recruitment. No, 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 no. I'm using it as a form of giving away free stuff to people who might find it useful. That's not social media. <laughs> It's not. Don't laugh, it's not. Okay, well, if we're giving advice to people for LinkedIn, let's keep this really serious now. Okay. We need to give valuable advice for people on their LinkedIn profiles. What should they have on there and why when it comes to English language? Okay, well, when it comes to English language, we'll come to that in a second, but I think in terms of what, you're, what you should include is, first of all, you need a professional photograph your profile yeah you can't have one that includes you and your friends you and your cats and your dogs you doing something that's I don't know one of your hobbies it has to be a, a professional looking photograph something that you don't mind your future employers looking at yeah and then I think after that you've got to have a nice clear statement about who you are as a professional yeah you know, what your what your job title or professional expertise or area of business is. Yeah. I think it's great as well because you can list on LinkedIn all of your um, academic achievements, all of your certificates, any training you've, you've ever been on. You can link it all, you can list it all there and people can sort of view all of your training, which I think is really, really important part of... Um, understanding who and what a person is you know in the job hunting yeah, world you're showing potential employers what you know what you can offer them yeah all of your skills mm -hmm. then I think you obviously you need to uh, add your work experience and some people tend to just put like one or two lines you know imagine you've worked for a company for like 25 years and you describe 25 years of work in two sentences and I think that is just terrible you know there's no way you can describe 25 years of experience in just two lines you have to give details about what you've done give details of what you've done give details of your education your experience your training and also any licenses certifications so if you've been working for somebody for 25 years you might have a lot of education that's 25 years out of date you need to show relevant modern stuff. Yeah, keep it up to date. Make sure the, the most recent stuff is always at the top. Um, what else What else can you show on LinkedIn, Rachel? Well, obviously those skills and endorsements. You know, that that's what... If somebody's looking for a particular person with a particular skill and then they see that various people on their profile has have endorsed them saying hey I can recommend personally that this person is great at speaking English that's going to look good yeah definitely yeah so personal endorsements and accomplishments what have you accomplished in your life 
particularly in your business life. There's also an interests section within your profile as well. What are your interests on LinkedIn, Rachel? Education, linguistic research, um, any sort of associations that are related to teaching English, just to show my professionalism. If you're using LinkedIn in that professional capacity and you want it to be your CV, keep your interest professional. So, let's talk about how you use LinkedIn or how you should use LinkedIn. I think one of the best ways to search and find a new job opportunity is now through LinkedIn. What do you think, Rachel? I do think it is the first place that employers go when um, somebody's interested in a vacancy. They want to check you out. If you're not on LinkedIn, you better be on LinkedIn. They want to know why yeah. if you're not on LinkedIn. Yeah. And also, all those recruitment agencies, I think they use LinkedIn as their database of people to contact when they want to find someone for a job. So that's one element, but I think you as an individual, you should be using LinkedIn to um, enhance your career, to create more opportunities for you. And you do that by making contacts. So perhaps there's an industry that you work in or there's a um, certain company you want to work for. You can make contact with relevant people through LinkedIn, like you can make connections and you can cultivate those connections and those contacts to help you be at the top of a list when there is an opportunity. So it's a kind of networking? Yeah, a social network. Ah, <laughs> that's a little bit different, isn't it? Networking, yeah. networking. Yeah. Now, I did hear from a student, one of my students, I can't remember when, some time ago, somebody said to me, you've got to have at least 500 connections on your LinkedIn profile, otherwise you don't appear in, you know, the good quality searches. Okay. So even if, I, yeah, I read an article as well. Somebody said when you get a, a contact request from somebody, even if you don't know them, accept it. Okay, Doesn't just mean a build-up. Yeah, you don't have to endorse them, but at least accept it. Okay, so you start building up your number of contacts. Absolutely. That kind of defeats the um, the the object, I think, of, of, of using it to enhance yourself. But I can understand... Hey, I'm just telling you what somebody told me and what I read. Yeah. I'm not saying whether it's right. No, it probably is right. You know, you probably, you know, like with everything that's sort of social, the more the better. Um, but I think the people who use LinkedIn the best are those who target their contacts. You know, if, if you're targeting working for a particular company or a particular industry, then target those individuals who can help you to find work um, you know contact them getting you know make connections and start conversations on LinkedIn you know share relevant information any articles or anything that you that you're doing with them that's relevant to their industry or their work and you know that's your foot in the door to getting your dream job I think well, I do think because it's online and what with everybody smart working at the moment, remote working, it's a great way for you to do some job hunting just from your computer. Yeah, why not? If you're in a dead end job, why not just be um, job hunting while you're on your computer, while you're working? Yeah, I mean, there is a setting that you can show recruiters you are open to work. Yeah, but can your employer see that as well, though? That, I'm not sure about that. I am freelance. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but imagine imagine that you say, yes, I'm looking for a job, and your boss sees that you're looking for a job on LinkedIn. There has to be some way to control that. Maybe your boss is on LinkedIn because he, he or she is looking for a job too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, let me tell you a funny story. Now, this happened a long, long time ago, and I heard this from somebody who worked in recruitment. And it was a guy, um, a guy had sent his CV to a recruitment agency. And this recruitment agency thought, wow, this guy is the perfect fit for a job that, that 
our client is looking for. He, had ex he has exactly the right skills, exactly the right qualifications. He's perfect for the job. Guess what? He was the person who was about to be replaced. <laughs> was he sacked or did he leave? No, he got sacked. He was getting sacked, but he didn't realise he was getting sacked. <laughs> the company had decided to find a replacement before sacking him. Which oh, is a bit wrong, I think, but yeah. there you go. Okay. Anyway, that was an interesting story. All right. Uh, one of the things I would say with LinkedIn is it's always good to look at other people's profiles. Um, if you really want, you know, if you're looking for a promotion to a, to a higher position, then go and find the people who are doing that job that you want and have a look at their profile. Have a look at quite a, a variety of profiles and see what people are featuring on their profile you know what their their um, description is is what what uh, qualifications how they present themselves on their LinkedIn profile I think that is a great way for, for you to look at your profile and go mm, yeah what's missing yeah also read their posts read the things that they post on there as well that are relevant to the industry join the groups there are loads of groups on there industry groups um, that can keep you up to date with all of the trends and all, all the things that are relevant to a particular industry or job type. Yeah, I think it's a really great place. It's a really great thing. Um, you just have to use it in a in a in a proper way. It's not social media. It is professional media. It's professional networking. Yeah, it's professional networking. Mm. Okay. I think 